Hello everyone, and welcome to another beer review. Now, today we're on a wee cheapy, and I got the idea after reading an article um, about, was it Marco Pierre White, the kind of famous British chef, um, being caught in Aldi, buying loads of cheap stuff, including um, boxes of Moretti beer, which apparently um, he sells... They're claiming he sells the same beer um, at his hotel near Bath um, for almost £8 a bottle. So he claims, I mean, glasses are dirty, but uh, this is what they claim anyway. I'm kind of dubious. I'm, I'm sure you'll probably get the, the stuff for the hotel, probably coming from a, a main supplier, not from the local um, supermarket. But you never know. But I just thought, well, I was in. Asda, um, not long after reading this article, funnily enough, the same day, and uh, I noticed this, and it was a strange one though, because it came in cans, 500ml cans, but it also came in the little stubby kind of um, bottles that you get in France, and it is supposed to be um, beer deluxe Asda's French style beer, and there you go. Now, apparently it's French style lager, it's supposed to be premium. It is what they say is it's five hundred ml, it's four percent, it's actually brewed in France, apparently. Oh wait a minute, no maybe not brewed in France, it's packed in France. So I presume it would be kind of French style lager, it would be brewed on continental Europe anyway, maybe not in France, but it could be strange not to be kind of brewed in France because we've got a lot of these kind of macro breweries in, in France that make beer for, for lots of uh, different supermarkets and other different brands as well. So I'd be very surprised if it wasn't brewed in France, but it says it's packed in France. It's 4%. It's 500ml can. And it's £4 for a full pack. So it's only £1 a can. So... How bad can it be? <laughs> and the reason why I'm doing lagers today is because, well, as you can see, the sun's out. And I'm in Scotland, and that's a very rare thing. Not me being in Scotland, the sun being out in Scotland. Yeah, that's a bit of a strange one. It's a bit bright on this side, though, isn't it? But anyway, let's crack it open and get it poured. So I can tell you absolutely nothing about this. I, I couldn't even tell you what the actual stubby bottles were. But you can get it in stubbies if you don't want the, the cans. I presume it'd be very kind of similar kind of price, you know, per volume of beer. Maybe slightly a bit more because it's more packaging. But again, if you don't really drink much beer or you don't drink much beer at one time, then maybe the stubbies might be more suitable for you, or maybe it's better for barbecues and things like that. But there we go. For people on the podcast, it's like in a light golden clear lager. Smell wise, you're getting green. Maybe a little bit grassy. But yeah, just getting kind of light grains, maybe some light kind of grassy tones. And that's really it. Just like kind of sweet kind of tones coming off it, you know. The smell you're getting would associate with something kind of sweeter, not something kind of bitter or anything like that. So, let's see what it tastes like. Um, first thing I would notice about it is it's quite neutral in the flavour front. There's a bit of sweetness there, there's a bit of grain there and everything else, but especially in the finish, that really is quite neutral. Um, strange for a French style beer, you would expect to have a little bit more on the back end. 
especially if you go towards like in a beer 33 or um, the kind of original Cronenberg, not the Cronenberg 1664. And you would get that kind of slightly kind of bitter edge, which of course in the Cronenberg 1664 is kind of slightly more of a bitter chemical edge in the aftertaste. But yes, yeah, so there is that kind of slightly kind of uh, yeah, there is that kind of slightly edge to it that you get with a kind of more French style beer, like coming from Alsace region, but this doesn't really have that. It's quite neutral in the back end, no real chemical. Because you expect sometimes with these cheap lagers, you do that kind of get a kind of slightly kind of chemical aftertaste. That's uh quite widely associated with Stella Hartwell and things like that, but and 1664, Grolsch, all these type of ones do it. And it's like, but no, this is actually quite neutral. It's not busting with flavour, I'll be totally honest. It's not busting with flavour. It's actually quite neutral, but it's got quite a nice mouthfeel. The sweetness is not too much, but there's that little bit of sweetness just kind of Pips up a little bit, and overall, it's actually not too bad for the money. I mean, we're going to be totally honest. It's a four percent lager. It's a pound a can. So we're looking at it at that kind of a price point in the market. It's actually not too bad, to be totally honest. It's. I can see if you're having barbecues in the summer. It is maybe go for the stubbies, um, especially with lots of friends round and things like that. And I think it would be perfect for that. You know, just get them in a cooler with loads of ice and yeah, people can just grab them. And of course, if you've got a few packs, it's easy enough to top up the cooler, you know, as it starts to get a bit low. And I think it'd be a very good cost effective way. And I'm sure everybody would have a good time on it. it it's, it's really quite unoffensive, um, which let's be totally honest. The beers round about this kind of price range usually can be quite offensive, actually, and really quite, oh, Jesus, you know. Um, but surprisingly enough, this isn't offensive. Um, but like I say, the flavours are quite neutral and there's nothing kind of overly complex about it in any way, shape or form. It doesn't give you the watery edge either. Um, but overall, it's actually not too bad. I would compare it along the lines of likes of Foster's and Carling and all that type of stuff. Now I know Carling for equivalent four pack is roughly about four pounds fifty. So if you're buying this, I would probably say this is actually no worse, maybe slightly better flavour wise than Carling. And let's be totally honest, you're saving fifty pence a pack, you know. And, of course, you've got the option you can get this in stubbies as well as the cans, the 500ml cans. So, there's a bit more kind of uh, functionality to this beer, as well as saving a, a bit of money as well. So, But, yeah, I'm actually quite surprised, to be totally honest. I actually thought it was going to be worse, but it isn't. So, let's break down the flavours. Um, starts off light malt, nice bit of grain and a little bit of sweetness. That's really it. quite quite a light front end. Here's onto the mid tongue, and yeah, you've got the grains there. You still got that little bit of sweetness there. The malt is kind of dying down, but with the malt dying down a bit, you're just getting a little kind of grassy tones. But yeah, it's quite kind of flavour neutral, nothing offensive, very easy drinking. And then it gets over to the aftertaste, and the aftertaste, it just, the flavours that transfer over from the mid-term to the aftertaste. There's a little bit of malt, a little bit of grassy tones, grain, and the sweetness, and they all just kind of, just kind of tail off and dissipate together, and, and fairly quickly. So, 
you would refer to it as more of a kind of clean finish, but I, I would say it's, it's quite a neutral finish. There's there's nothing there. There's no linger, any flavours lingering there at all in the mouth. It just and it just go just leaves you with a kind of clean palate. Um, I think the only thing that is left is just that little bit of that kind of sweetness because you've had you know in the aftertaste as it dissipates. It's the only kind of residue flavour that you, you, you kind of slightly hang on to and that's just probably because it's the sweetness. But overall, yeah, it's actually not too bad. What would I give this out of 10? There's a question. Well, I always remember, I remember, I used to drink a lot of... Well, I promise, the town where I grew up, it was... Uh, twinned with a, a suburb of Paris called Torsi, so it was, and uh, I used to have to go there quite a lot because I played in the, the local pipe band and that was kind of pushed forward front and centre as part of everything to do with the town twinning, you know, it's all, you know, that stereotype, Scottish bagpipes, all that kind of stuff, and uh, yeah, so nearly every trip that uh, the town twinning did, going to Torsi, that... Uh, the pipe band was there. I'm sure they were probably getting bloody sick. I was thinking, oh, they're coming out of the bloody pipe band again. And Jesus, that's all they seem to have. You know, every time they visit and that type of stuff, their idea of basically showing their culture is, you know, <laughs> sending out the pipe band. It'd be better off, you give us a French beer, we take a right good skinful of it, and then we start a fight. That would probably be something a bit more interesting. <laughs> You know, getting tacked up in cheap French beer and then trying not to fuck out each other. That would be probably more realistic, but I do remember quite a few times, basically, you know, the bus, because we always have to go on bloody buses, Jesus God. But yeah, I'm always used to remember going to the supermarkets. The bus would always stop at the supermarket, so everybody could get basically, you know, tacked up, basically, um, on cheap French lager. And, uh, and the problem is, we wouldn't peruse it, we'd just go straight in there, get loads of blooming French lager, put a load of it in the bus, and then basically, you know, get one of the stubby packs, and then just go and just sit out in the kind of grass areas in the car park of the, the supermarket and just get tanned away. <laughs> that that was a So yes, I've drunk quite a lot of French beer over the years. <laughs> and... Uh, I always wondered why the cases of Cronenberg were sold in France but not sold in the UK and we got the 1664 piss water, which was dreadful. Even the French wouldn't drink that shit. Um, and beer 33, both of them were far better beers than the French shit we were getting at the time and now over here. But uh, So yeah, this actually is a better option than what we used to get over here. Um, but yeah, out of ten. Well you've got to take oh, excuse me, it's a wee bit gassy though. Um you've got to take the price into it. So you have it's uh, a pound a can. And in fact, um I wish I'd actually paid more attention to see what the stubby says. But I'll I'll look it up and I'll put it down below as well. So I will include what the price are for the stubbies and I'm sure they'll be what what they usually um fuckers. Sorry about that. Jesus, Amazon. Oh, yeah, they're going to deliver your parcel at 5pm. 5pm. Uh, just the back of three. The buggers have turned up. And I think that'll be fine. I'll get, I'll get this video done and out of the way. and it won't be any problem. No, no, we're bloody Amazon. But anyway, what would I give this out of ten? As we get back to it and dragging the arse out of it. Um, well, I'll be totally honest. I would say for price-wise, it is a better value than, say, the likes of Foster's or, or Carling. Um, I would say it's just as drinkable. In fact, I actually think the flavour profiles are a bit nicer just because they're a little bit more neutral. And they're great for these kind of, like, nondescript kind of events where people just want something in their hand and something alcoholic to drink, something wet and alcoholic. With, you know, that's not going to in a clash with any food or things that's so perfect for kind of these events for like if you're watching football with, you, with the mates and uh things like that that's male and female 
um, or if you're having a barbecue and you've got friends and family around, then yeah, something like this, it's just fine. So on that basis, I would say, yeah, I would say it's roughly about, um, flavour-wise, yeah, it's kind of very neutral, really is very neutral, very unoffensive. And on that basis, I would normally give the likes of Forces and Carling between three and four. Um, but with the price and everything else, then I would probably say this is a, maybe a 4.5. Um, maybe almost a five. Um, but yeah, it's not a wonderful, brilliant lag, and I'm not going to pretend it is. But for the price point, it's drinkable. It's 4%. It's unoffensive flavours. It's another option that saves you a bit of money. And yeah, my view is give it a go. It's okay. Yeah, so I would say four and a half, maybe bordering on to a five. But again, price is playing a big part in that. To be totally honest, not really the flavours, but yeah, easy drinking, cheap, should be readily available, and you've got the option of buying it in stubbies or 500ml cans, so it has that little bit of kind of functionality as well. So, yeah, four and a half out of ten, four percent, 500ml or in the stubbies. Um, thanks for watching, cheers, and bye for now.